Hello, 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 hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. My name is Sayyam and welcome back to the channel, right? Today we're gonna solve this interesting tricky problem matrix maximum sum or maximum matrix sum actually. Uh, to be frank, this question is not at all difficult. It seems like although like I would rate this problem again 8 out of 10. This is an amazing problem, amazing observation. Like it's not a standard problem. It's again a greedy kind of scenario where you have to dig down see the uh, test cases, see how you can approach it, see how, what the actual operation means and what it eventually turns out to be very funny. Uh, trust me and stay tuned till the end. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and like the video. And then, yeah, let's get started then. You are given an N cross N matrix. It does not matter the M cross N as well. You can do the following operation any number of times. Choose any two adjacent element of the matrix and multiply each of them by minus one. Okay, so what are you gonna do? You can pick two elements like which are connected like this, these two, or you can say like these two horizontal, vertical, right? Horizontal, vertical. They should be connected. There should be one layer should be connected. And two curl layers are obviously we know what our adjacent means. We already done a lot of things by doing BFS and graphs. The goal is to maximize the summation of the matrix elements. Return the maximum sum of the matrix element using the operation mentioned above. Okay, makes sense. Means what we are doing essentially doing we are converting some negative numbers to positive numbers. That is the advantage this operation is giving, and we want to maximize that somehow. The question makes sense. Uh, let's look at the constraints. So constraints is n is two power fifty. Okay, I don't think so. N and constraints is is a lot of concern. The most important thing we have to think about it, okay, what this operation actually means. So they are saying, okay, let's consider this kind of scenario 1 minus 1, minus 1, 1. Okay, what we can do is we can do this operation on this one and the operation on this one. So it will be like, firstly, it will be like minus 1, minus 1, 1, and then finally it's like 1, 1, 1, 1, boom, all become positive and the maximum sum is 4. Okay, okay. So actually what we are bothered about, leave this test case, we'll consider this later. But let's try to understand uh, what we want to do. We want to maximize the sum, right? That means we want to convert as many negative elements to positive elements. We won't, uh, we can say, uh, disturb the positive elements. They're already positive. No need to uh, disturb them. The most important thing is converting negative into positive. Hmm, that's a good idea. What kind of adjacency it could have? Like, uh, let's try to understand it, right? So minus one, minus one. It could be very close to each other. So in one operation, can we make them both of them positive? Yes, we can. Like minus one, minus one. I'm saying, uh, they're negative numbers. You can put minus two, minus two as well. Yes, I am. In one go itself, you can do that. If is this kind of scenario exists, something like this, can we do it? Yes, we already saw. Yes, we already saw. We can do this also. Right. Applying two operations, this and this one. What is the another case available like this? 3 minus 1, 2, 5. Now can we do it? Yes, you can. Apply operation on this. Apply operation on this. Yes, I am. Yes, we can do this as well. So we can say 1 minus 3, 1. And then again, uh, sorry, minus 1. And this is 3, 1. Perfectly fine. Do you see an observation and a trend here? Sayam, we are able to see that we can convert, I think, all negatives to the positives. Is it the case? Uh, you might think so, but it's not. What about this case? Uh, you can say, yeah, only single negative. Right. We cannot convert this because whenever you are doing this operation, right, operation applying this operation, you are not changing the number of negatives. If they are both are negative, then we are obviously changing. But is, if there is actually one negative, we are not changing the number of negatives. It will be still one itself. We can do again and again. Let's say this is the case one one. You can try. This is you do this. We are just shifting. You can increase these also minus one minus one then minus one. Do these, but eventually there will be one negative. Will be one negative. But if negatives are even if negatives are even then then there is no problem then there is no problem because you can easily 
do the with the help of these operations convert them all to positive also i think you're able to see that we can change the position of negatives we can change the position of negatives right because when we are doing these operations 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 or you can say minus 1 here we we can shift the negative to this or maybe this to any element we want to any element we want using these operation because adjacency elements is applied right and with that what are we going to do we're going to shift these element as close as possible and if they are in this position or maybe in this position we will apply this operation one more time and make them both of them positive this fails if they have odd elements we can pair up all the even elements right let's say there are five elements 1 minus 1 minus 2 3 4 minus 1 minus 5 2 and minus 3 okay we can pair up all the even elements we can make them positive but one element will still remain like for example this you can pair this up you can pair this up but you cannot pair this up you will it will be still negative so most of the people like me thought about what that they thought that it's very simple i am what are you going to do you going to uh, take uh, uh, some variable and you going to sum over all the values over the absolute values of all the matrix and then what are you going to do you going to check the odd case if there are odd negatives odd negatives then what are you going to do uh, you going to uh, remove minimum negative minimum negative element right that will all only will remain because we already know we can shift it and if that even the entire sum entire sum but now many people may think oh what about zeros sam what about zeros let's say this kind of scenario <laughs> did you get surprised ah yeah i did minus 1 zero you can apply the operation it becomes zero Okay, okay. That means zero also can contribute in this thing. Mm, that interesting. That is interesting. Zero can contribute to make it positive also. So that seems confusing. That seems confusing. Okay. But let's try to think about this one. When there are odd elements, let's say we consider zeros also in our negative count. But let's say there are a uh, negative elements. Which one you will will you remove? Which one? will you remove is important is it just the minimum of all the negative elements or minimum of the entire matrix consider the above case should you just remove or make a left this itself negative or you can do something else sayam so, we can do something else what we can do what we can do we can shift this minus 1 to this we can using these kind of operation let me just show you see for example for example it's like 2 3 4 1 minus 5 and now minus is on 5 but should it be remain on 5 no you can shift that how it's minus 4 and 5 and 3 and then you again shift it minus 2 4 5 3 boom your minus 2 got shifted on to what are the simply edge cases you have to consider this is a beautiful problem but remember that what are the edge cases we saw firstly we saw the edge cases of zero edge cases of zero and then second edge case we saw uh, of like minimum element should be of entire matrix not all negatives entire matrix not all negatives that is very 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 important and right these are the edge cases so what is our final observation so we saw that if there are even negatives we can do this operation like using some operations we can convert all negatives to positive definitely but if there are odd negatives due to this operation we cannot convert at least like exactly one element to positive means there will be one element will be negative but that one element which will be negative it is in our hand to to make it negative so we'll make it as small as possible and not only of the negative elements of the entire matrix of the entire matrix now people may be wondering about what about zeros so you, you have not considered the zeros case consider that if minimum element we are considering right minimum element will con consider zero also 
zero. Obviously, we are I talking about the absolute value of the minimum element, not the neg negative element. Zero will come, and we will transfer the negative element to zero. Exactly, and then we don't need to subtract anything. Actually, the sum does not contribute anything, and this covers the edge case itself. So, what are you gonna do? Entire matrix, and if there is a zero, the negative will be transferred to zero itself. So, what are we gonna do? Let's say there is a zero also. So, we're gonna transfer this on this negative element, negative on this, and boom, job is done, and that's all. The question is simply this. For example, let's try to quickly see this example. Right, so this I got wrong because I didn't consider the entire thing. I thought minus four is the minimal I need to subtract. I need to shift this minus to this minus one, and boom, the job will be done. So, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You gonna iterate, iterate in entire matrix, entire matrix. You will make a count variable. Which will cal calculate the negative elements. No need to consider zero here. If there is a zero, there is no problem, right? Because I already told you, if they're odd or even does not matter, the negative will be shifted on that, and that means the automatically the sum is the entire matrix. Okay, this is the count will ca calculate the negative element, the sum, which will store the entire matrix sum. Taking absolute values, taking absolute value. Okay, yes. And then what we gonna do? Uh, we gonna iterate on that, continuously count that, sum that, and obviously keep a mini variable also. Initialize is one ten power nine initially. Minimum of entire matrix. Very very important. Entire matrix. We gonna iterate. We gonna iterate. Fill these up values. For for example, in this case, the count is one. The sum is, you can say that absolute value obviously will take so eleven fourteen, fourteen plus uh nine thirteen, plus uh nine. So you can say that uh twenty two, thirty six. Well, thirty six turns out to be some. Don't worry, it's not thirty four. But why? Let me just tell you. Cool. So we'll see. Okay, we'll calculate the sum as thirty-six. The mini we consider is one, right? The overall matrix minimum. Now what we're gonna do? We're gonna check if count modulo two equal to equal to one. What that means is, okay, means there are odd elements. There will be at least exactly one element, not at least exactly one element, which will be zero. Oh, well, I'm not zero, negative. So we will consider and make it to mini. So we'll Consider and again put the minus sign or the mini element. So we'll put minus here. We'll remove minus from here. So actually, what happens? So we actually consider one into our sum. Now we have to subtract it twice to make it negative. So what we gonna do? Sum minus one, minus one, right? Because we have to firstly subtract the one because we have already taken it once, but we have to make it negative also. So actually, it will be subtracted twice. So thirty six minus two. Which equals to thirty four. This is the actual answer. Remember that, right? I hope you got it. The counting, how we reach this, the even condition, how we saw everything. The zero case is already covered there. So you need to, you need not to count the zeros explicitly because mini will be zero at that time. Because let's say one minus one zero two, zero will be considered. What are you gonna do? You gonna transfer this? Then you gonna transfer this minus zero is actually zero itself, right? So zero will be subtracted, and no worries about that. So you can handle the zero case in this way. I hope you understood the entire intuition, the thought process. Let me just quickly show you the implementation so that you can understand it better. So yeah, this was of course it's pretty simple. You wanna initialize the sum with long long. Remember that n m mini with n power nine. You can initialize with larger also, but okay, this is also fine. You can iterate. Remember that only negative elements. You may consider zeros also, like less than is zero equals to zero also, but does not matter. If it is zero, the mini will be zero. So either way, but the ideal way is less than zero. Only elements you should need to consider mini. Then you consider mini, and then you consider the absolute sum. Very very important. Everything we are doing absolutely. Then we will check. Oh, if there are negative elements are odd, 
you're gonna remove one mini element but mini is in our choice mini firstly i move to this one the safe condition but no that won't be correct should be absolute of all absolute mini of the entire global matrix very very important and this we should remove twice i i told you the logic why we removed twice because already we considered it once you actually need to subtract it to uh, subtract it twice and just return the sum and this is the maximum possible it's just a greedy idea beautiful problem beautiful observation and i hope you learned something new out of this video and if you like this video make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video and see you in the next video then till then keep learning goodbye